When a person walks into the entranceway to Viking Hall, they can't help but notice the massive trophy case that spreads across the inside wall that holds but a portion of the athletic trophies from Tennessee High's past. Sitting in the center spot in that case is a large trophy that says National Champions 1972. Since 1910, the National Sports News Service has selected a national championship high school football team based on the records of the leading teams in each state. Tennessee High was definitely a team to be in the running considering the fact that the team had been second in the state in 1970, won the AAA state championship in 1971, and decidedly won the state championship again in 1972 with a heavy win over Knox Central of 46 to 12, a win over Nashville Overton of 26 to 0, and a championship win over Chattanooga Baylor of 39 to 6. That year, no one even came close to the team that had largely been playing together as a team since junior high school. Uh, we had a great selection of talent back in the late 60s and early 70s and uh, young talent that matured and got better and that, that's, what, that's what brought us the state championships and designated as the national champions. We recognize the difference in the talent from previous years, of course, uh, but sometimes when you have talent, sometimes it doesn't mesh. Sometimes they, they don't work together because they all have their own little thing they want to do. And, uh, but this group, this group definitely worked together with the chemistry to produce winning seasons and uh, undefeated seasons. And, and <clears throat> they gave up some of their own initial goals maybe to be a part of the team and right down the line from the starters to the guys in practice that were running the plays of the opponents and the whole, the whole group worked very well together as a team and, and the whole chemistry just came together so well. Tennessee High was and is a different kind of school. It's a relatively small school in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains that teaches the students that they can compete with students from any school, anywhere. I see these fellows that have gotten older. And one of the goals of the coaches, any coaches, is to train young men to become good citizens and become, contribute to their community and make a success out of themselves. And I see that every day I go to the store, grocery store, wherever, I run into a former Tennessee High, and it's not necessarily a football player, it may be a band member, just like this past Sunday. I was in Food City and I, this guy walks along and starts talking to me and I said, you were in the band, weren't you? And he said, yes I was. He said, in fact, he says, I play the trombone in our church band now. And you know, you, you, I have the advantage as opposed to some of the other coaches that have moved away, but I'm here and I see what's, what's been produced. And it's not always the all-stater, you know, that's successful. It's those that sat on the bench that contributed in that way, that have become successful citizens. I have a girl that's 10 and a girl that's six, and I want them to know what it, life can be like. I mean, uh, my wife tells me I lived in Pleasantville. Uh, <laughs> it, it just didn't happen that way. It couldn't have happened that way, but it did. And uh, so I want to let other people know that you don't have to live in a big city to achieve something. And you do it as a team. You can do a whole lot more if everybody's going in the same direction. And, uh, and that's what we did. We had one motive, and that was just to get better and better and better, see how good we could be. And uh, nobody, nobody was pulling in the other direction. And the coaches, bless their hearts, they worked 60, 70 hours a week, and, uh, and it paid off. I mean, there was, there was something to gain from that at the end of the road. Um, and Coach Harkey Johnson and Benny Boer and uh, Coach Rose and A.B., uh, John uh, Manning and uh, Coach Manning and uh, I'm sure I'm missing. I'm leaving one out or two. Mike Morton, Mike Coach Raby, yeah, yeah. Baby, and Coach Raby. I mean, there's a there's a bunch of coaches that all had something to do with it. But they all had the same vision, and that came from Coach Crop. 
He was at the top. And that's who um, all of us got more um, fatherly, stern, but loving uh, advice. advice. And uh, so we want to show other people what that can do. This team, this championship was a big deal for the entire city. I can remember Mary Jerry King, you know, he was with us all the way, you know, and traveled with us. And we had so many supporters, you know, which always makes it a lot easier, you know, and, uh, you know, the city really backed us. Gil Kyle, George Heath, and Andy Anderson have now joined forces to see that the story of this team is told. I think the story should be told. And uh, personally, I did a little personal research. And uh, when you start looking at national uh, championship footballs, uh, the state of Tennessee's Oak Ridge is the only other team in the state of Tennessee to ever win a national championship. And if you look at how many ball players play ball, and how many achieved what we achieved. At the time, it didn't mean so much, but as you get older and you check all the records and then you see all the ones that's competing, you understand how unique you really were. And uh, we feel that this story should be told. We're making a movie. We're making a movie about the wonderful uh, teams of the early 70s for Tennessee High School. Uh, I'm sure everyone remembers, even though all these guys here are getting fairly old now. But uh, we've uh, invented a movie called Stone Castles. It's an idea that uh, Gil Kyle and I came up with uh, about a year and a half ago. 30 years ago, in my thinking, I always wanted to do a movie on uh, uh, the, the football days here at THS. It's an unusual story in a small town in the mountains of Tennessee to, uh, to produce a national championship, two back-to-back -back state championships. The theme of the movie's in place. And the front of the movie's in place. Like I said, we start in 1936. We move to 40. And we're going to have period uh, leather helmets and the whole thing. And then we move to where these kids get together, Gil and Silcox and Heath and Bobby. And, and then we move into the 69 season when Gil enters. Gil's the first of the big four to enter the uh, varsity on the fourth game of 69. And we work our way to that, and then we hit the 70s season, which is the beginning of the Cinderella part of the story, and it just gets better and better and better. We have a Stone Castles theme. It's recorded. We have uh, our run to win, the Gills theme. It's going to take us a couple of months, but it's going to get done. We think we've got a good business plan, and we've already, uh, our feedback is already, don't drop the ball on this, boys, and we're not going to drop the ball on this. So will there be a day that we can pay a few dollars and see on the big screen the story of the 1972 Tennessee High Vikings National Championship football team? At this point there's a good possibility, and if these guys tackle this task like they tackle their opponents in the Old Stone Castle, start popping the popcorn because it will happen.